I had some opportunity to really come back in the music business right. with the best with the best when they came to me we sat there together and i was like i had to say i can't we that were, morning, i literally had handcuffs put on me yeah, wait th that morning while we were at the front desk showing the 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 attendant did he had that man in the room look yes i put my ear to the door and i brought the phone because diddy started going in overdrive i ain't know what the f was going on but i just heard <laughs> slapping against so, Jaguar Wright was arrested, the woman who's been spilling all the juicy industry tea, calling out everyone from Diddy to Jay-Z, R. Kelly, and a whole bunch of other shady characters. For a long time, she's been dropping these bombshell claims about everyone's favorite celebrities, and a lot of what she said has turned out to be true. I mean, just look at Diddy. But despite all this, she's mostly managed to stay out of trouble, but her recent arrest has people talking. Some folks are saying that the bigwigs at the top are trying to silence her by any means necessary. I can't wait. I can't wait for everybody to find out what's really been going on in the background. Now, Jaguar might be considered a small fry compared to the big names she's been calling out, making her an easy target. Like, this isn't her first run-in with the law. But there's another big fish who's also not afraid to call out his peers, none other than Mark Wahlberg. Many people don't know that Marky Mark first tried to make it in rap, but he had to abandon his dream because of one person. And according to the rumors, that person is none other than Diddy. I, do it. I had some opportunity to really come back in the music business right. with the best with the best when they came to me we sat there together and i was like i had to say i can't at this point nothing really surprises us anyway let's dive right in as we all know diddy is probably the most talked about celebrity right now because of all those allegations against him. He's basically considered a disgraced mogul, like his buddy R. Kelly. Now, the more Diddy got exposed, the more other celebrities were getting exposed too, and whether the rumors are true or not, it's still bad PR for their image. Jaguar Wright was at the forefront of calling them out. Everything she said about Diddy turned out to be true, which gave her more credibility. And you better believe these celebrities definitely don't want that, hence the arrest. Jay, you told us. You told us. Today, girl. Sources claim she was arrested for something else, but people believe that's just a cover-up. They think the real reason she was locked up was because the higher-ups don't want her talking. So on June 6, Jaguar was arrested in Dallas for property theft between $30,000 and $150,000. She was released on June 7 after a $10,000 bond was posted. Apparently, she had an outstanding warrant because she allegedly rented a U-Haul truck and never returned it. However, before she was even bailed out, she called Sean Davey way from jail to tell him she'd been set up and that there was no legitimate charge to hold her on. So with this whole truck situation, are they going to give you a bail or no? This is why a lot of people are saying there's definitely more to the arrest because Jaguar has said a lot of things that ruffled some feathers. And speaking of things, Mark Wahlberg also has some juicy stuff to say about Diddy. Rumor has it that Marky Mark quit the rap game because of Diddy. The official story is that Wahlberg wanted to be a rapper but stumbled into acting because he needed to make ends meet when his music career struggled to take off. However, the unofficial story is way more interesting. Apparently, Wahlberg bailed on the music industry because of what he saw at Diddy's house and in studios all over the country. According to some deep insider sources, the wild excesses and crazy scenes he witnessed pushed him to ditch music and focus on movies. I had some opportunity to really come back in the music business right. with the best with the best. When they came to me, we sat there together and I was like, I had to say, I can't. But you won't hear this from Mark himself because he's supposedly planning a comeback to rap and doesn't want to ruffle any feathers at his future record label. Originally, Mark Wahlberg wanted to follow in the footsteps of his older brother, Donnie Wahlberg, one of the founding members of the boy band New Kids on the Block. In fact, Mark was part of the original lineup but left to chase his true passion, rap. He formed Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch with his friends Hector the Booty Inspector, Ashley Ace, and DJT in 1991. The group released their first project, Music for the People, and scored a big hit with their single, Good Vibrations. It's about that time to break forth. Fans loved the new group and their music really struck a chord. They had another hit with their second single, Wild Side, which peaked at number five on the Billboard Hot Singles sales chart and even went gold. Dreams shattered pride, all because Annie took a hit. 
on the wild side. Things were going great for the Funky Bunch when they opened for the new kids on the block during their last tour. They were on the rise and even launched their own video game, though it didn't do as well as their music. Still, undeterred, the group released their second LP, You Gotta Believe, but it didn't achieve the same success as their debut album. They only managed to get a minor hit with the title track. As the group struggled to recapture their initial success, things took a turn for the worse in 1992, when Mark co-signed Shaba Rank's controversial comments about the LGBTQ plus community, saying gay people should be crucified. The backlash was swift and intense. The gay community called for his cancellation, demanding brands drop him as an ambassador, and urging fans to boycott his music. The heat from his comments was so intense that Marky Mark had to move to Germany to revive his career. Over there, he signed with East West Records and worked with the late reggae artist Prince Ital Joe. Together, they managed to breathe new life into his music. Their track United became a hit in Germany, topping several local charts and earning high praise from fans and critics alike. Buoyed by their success, Marky Mark and Prince Ital Joe teamed up again in 1995 for a remix album under Ultraphonic Records. The German success allowed Mark to put together a musical act called One Love, where he served as the producer and sometimes the lead singer. They started working on a third studio album, and he even featured on their song That's the Way I Like It, which had moderate success compared to his solo projects. However, soon enough, his label started pushing him in a direction he didn't want to go. They wanted him to adopt a tougher persona, similar to Eminem and dive into gangster rap. But Marky Mark's head was in a different space. He had done time in jail for an incident involving Johnny Trin, a Vietnamese-American veteran. Mark was sentenced to two years but only served 45 days. This experience changed him and he wanted to make music that positively influenced his fans and united people across racial lines in America. Unfortunately, his music label had different ideas. They wanted him to portray a street persona, rapping about sleeping with women, doing feuding with his mother, and calling out anyone who disagreed with him. In an interview, Wahlberg opened up about how things could have been different if his label had just supported his vision. I think I could have been a lot more successful if I'd been allowed to do what I wanted to do. The record company had one specific idea, and they were determined to go for that, Wahlberg explained. Initially, he went along with the label's plans, especially since his brother, Donnie, was already making millions, and he was broke. I had just gotten out of jail and I wanted to make a record. I saw my brother making all this money while I was still struggling, so I kind of compromised a bit. But the ongoing arguments about his career direction eventually pushed him to his breaking point. When they kept pushing me further in the opposite direction, that's when I decided not to make another record and to wait out my contract, Mark said. By then, he had seen enough of the industry's dark side, full of evil, debauchery, and corruption, and decided he didn't want to be part of it anymore. He had lived through the disastrous East Coast-West Coast rivalry that claimed the lives of two of the greatest rappers of their era, Tupac and Biggie Smalls. He had witnessed the havoc people like Diddy had wreaked on the lives of men and women in the industry, and he wanted to chart a new course. Officially, Mark Wahlberg and Diddy crossed paths around 2013 when they launched a high-performance alkaline water together. The business started off strong and performed well in the market. However, word on the street is that their first meeting happened when Marky Mark was desperately trying to revive his music career after leaving East West Records. He was looking for a fresh start far away from his checkered past, and he thought Bad Boy Records might be the answer. The reason Mark didn't end up signing with Bad Boy is subject to much speculation, one being that Diddy allegedly requested something very unusual, like giving him head. Now, this might sound completely outlandish, but if Jaguar Wright's words are anything to go by, it might not be too far-fetched. A few years ago, Jaguar claimed that Diddy was in the habit of sleeping with new male artists who came to him for financial help. She narrated a story about a female lawyer who worked for Bad Boy Records but had to quit after she accidentally walked in on Diddy receiving oral SEX from singer and actor Christopher Williams. According to Jaguar, the lawyer had gone to Diddy's office to get some papers signed. Finding the door slightly ajar, she let herself in only to see Williams kneeling between Diddy's legs. She quickly exited the room, leaving the two men to their business. When she walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams perform a on Puff. Diddy didn't say anything to her for the rest of the day, but he confronted her the next day, asking what she had seen. The petrified lawyer asked why he hadn't locked his office door before getting intimate. This question apparently infuriated Diddy, who claimed that the building was his and he could do whatever he wanted, wherever he wanted, without anyone questioning him. She was like, I just don't understand why you left the door unlocked. If you were in there doing that, why would you leave the door unlocked? He said, I'll do whatever the f I wanna do in my building. 
And she's, I just don't know. He was like, it's power, see? Continuing the narrative, R&B singer Chris Brown chimed in with sentiments that echo Jaguar Wright's claims. He mentioned that Diddy rejected him because he didn't dance. And then uh, the funniest part, like, I don't, a lot of people don't know, Diddy turned me down. At first glance, fans thought Chris was talking about actual dancing, something he's incredibly skilled at. But some fans believe that his comment had a deeper, more troubling meaning that wasn't immediately obvious. According to these fans, when Chris Brown said he didn't dance, he wasn't talking about dancing to Diddy's music. They think he was referring to something much darker, refusing to engage in inappropriate activities with Diddy. This theory gains traction when considering the allegations involving Christopher Williams in Diddy's office. If that incident is anything to go by, these fans might not be too far from the truth. Chris Brown wouldn't be the only artist to suggest that Diddy had questionable demands before signing new talent. There's been a lot of chatter recently about a lawsuit filed against Diddy by producer Lil Rod, who accused him of numerous disturbing actions. Lil Rod's accusations paint a grim picture of what some artists might have faced when dealing with Diddy. According to the lawsuit, Diddy was pretty open about his intimate history with some big names in the industry, including a rapper and an R&B singer. The lawsuit didn't name names directly, but fans were quick to connect the dots using clues like one being a a rapper who dated Nicki Minaj and another who performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Pretty quickly, people figured out they were talking about Meek Mill and Usher. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in intercourse with rapper. Five, that's redacted. Look, five, he's a your rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Now, I'm sure you all know Meek is definitely a rapper from who dated Nicki from 2015 to 2017. Usher also just had a very successful Vegas residency, which reportedly grossed over $100 million, and he did in fact perform at the Super Bowl. Anyway, going back to Rodney's lawsuit, he claimed that he witnessed Usher and Diddy hooking up several times and making out with the girls that young Miami and Justin would bring for him. Rodney recalled the time where they were partying on Diddy's yacht, and he saw both Meek and Usher messing with several girls. Now, when this news hit, Meek went into overdrive on social media, firing off tweets left and right in a frantic attempt to clear his name. But interestingly, he never outright denied the buzz about him being Diddy's so-called boy toy. One of his tweets said, I'm from Philly. I don't do coke or freaky ass molly. Nobody won't even offer me coke because I'm that heavy. No man or what would ever approach me about gay activity and the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming lol. Things quieted down for a bit, with folks realizing that Meek seemed to be on the edge of a mental breakdown and nobody wanted to push him further. That is, until Diddy's ex-bodyguard dropped a bombshell, an audio clip allegedly featuring Meek and Diddy. The shockwaves were palpable. I mean, the voices on that recording, pretty darn close to Meek and Diddy. And the content? Let's just say it wasn't easy listening. Meek's screams, reportedly in serious distress, sent shivers down the spine of anyone who heard it. Trigger warning, this audio is very disturbing and very sensitive. <laughs> Now, the ex-bodyguard in question who recorded and leaked the audio made an entire video narrating how it came out. He said it happened during one of Diddy's freak offs and he decided to lean by the door to record what he was hearing because he was shocked to see Meek allowing Diddy to pound him like this. He said Diddy intentionally spiked everybody's drinks at that party so they would be too drunk and too high to even know what's going on. But he didn't drink and that's why he was sober enough to witness what he and Meek were doing. Like all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was spiked. Pass the f out. I don't drink. Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the f door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the f was going on, but I just heard laughing against cheeks. I heard. And to make matters even, Meek was caught following a page on Twitter that exclusively posts videos of black men hounding each other. Maybe he was trying to learn some new positions for Diddy. Who knows? But as soon as people caught him, he immediately unfollowed the page. And if that's not enough to raise eyebrows, there's more. An old song of Meek's surfaced online recently. And the lyrics? Let's just say they paint a pretty vivid picture. In the track, Meek talks about chasing his Hollywood dreams, but there's this whole section where he seems to confess to getting involved with Diddy in some not-so-savory ways to make it big. And then he's asking for forgiveness for his actions. I, I hope they forgive me for what I did with Diddy. <laughs> Dream chases. I hope they forgive me for what I did with Diddy.
it's truly heartbreaking to see the situation unfold, and it's becoming increasingly apparent that Diddy has been taking advantage of Meek for a long time. It seems Meek felt compelled to endure whatever Diddy put him through, perhaps in the hope that it would somehow catapult his career to new heights. And as for Usher, he himself has opened up about his time living with Diddy, which he referred to as the Puffy Flavor Camp. It sounds like it wasn't exactly the best place for a young artist to develop. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending you New over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp! Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. Gene Deal, who seems to know a lot about the inner workings of that circle, has even said that Usher's experience was way darker than most people realize. He hinted that Usher might have gone through similar ordeals that Cassie endured with Diddy, even suggesting that it got so bad at one point that Usher ended up in the hospital. And it doesn't stop there. Gene Deal also spilled the beans on something he called a S cult that Diddy was supposedly running, which he said included both Usher and Justin. The stuff he described about this group was downright disturbing. This out. Puff and Usher did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now I let Usher explain that to y'all. But how dare you say a man that you? You gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know I know. Dean brought up something pretty intense about Usher, suggesting he might have a trauma bond with Diddy due to some pretty heavy stuff that went down between them. This idea isn't far-fetched when you look at how Usher talks about Diddy. It's like he's always treading lightly, picking his words super carefully to avoid letting something slip that might stir up more rumors or controversy. But apart from the fact that Usher has talked about how wild his experience at Puffy Flavor Camp was, Diddy himself once made a comment about how he and Usher used to sleep in the same bed when he was still a minor. Though he tried to brush it off as a silly fight over Frosted Flakes, and Kevin Hart jumped in trying to lighten the mood, the statement didn't really sit right with a lot of people. My brother right here from day one, we used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know? So it's kind of understandable why Usher might seem to cover for Diddy. Considering how trauma can really mess with your head, there's also Justin Bieber. So last year, Justin Bieber started making headlines again after Cassie's lawsuit came out. And that lawsuit really started unraveling some dark stuff about Diddy. Initially, it seemed like maybe people were overreacting about how toxic things could have been for Justin around Diddy. But now, with all this new info, it's hard to deny that something really sketchy was going on. Jaguar Wright also shed some light on this in her latest interview with Storm Monroe. She talked about that unsettling video where Justin is seen with Odell Beckham and Trey Songs. In the video, it kind of looks like Justin might be doing something pretty compromising with Odell, like going down on him. Some fans tried to brush it off, saying maybe Justin was just high on which is still pretty bad because it's these older guys encouraging a younger guy into that lifestyle. But Jaguar set the record straight. It wasn't just some thing. She said it was exactly what it looked like Justin was doing, and she pointed out Justin's noticeably wet mouth at the end of that clip as proof that it wasn't innocent at all. And it looked like Justin Bieber might not have been into what was going on because Jaguar Wright mentioned that Trey Songs was basically playing lookout, making sure no one, especially the paparazzi, caught what was happening with Odell Beckham and Justin. It's a pretty twisted setup when you think about it. And then I think about that really disturbing footage of Bieber, Odell Beckham, and Trey songs. Like, and, and Trey's like literally sitting there playing lookout. Playing lookout as Justin Bieber goes down on Odell. The boy came up with his mouth wet. Mouth wet. According to Jaguar Wright, this downward spiral for Justin probably started after he spent those infamous 48 hours with Diddy. Remember that footage where Diddy's promising Justin a Lamborghini and a house during their staycation? Now that we know more about Diddy, that video just gives people the creeps. It's hard to watch without imagining what Justin had to endure under the guise of Diddy's mentorship. And yes, Diddy did end up giving Justin that Lamborghini. Like, as soon as Justin got his driver's license, he was seen driving a Lambo that looked just like the one Diddy talked about giving him. If Diddy didn't give it to him, him, then that's one heck of a coincidence, right? But here's the thing, why would Diddy give such an extravagant gift to a young artist out of the blue? A lot of folks think Diddy was playing the role of a sugar daddy, lavishing expensive gifts on Justin in return for some favors. Time. But yeah, yeah, the keys is yours when you, you know, when you get 16. You good to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. And then when you get 18, you get the house. Him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we gonna go. Fool, buck fool, crazy. Going crazy. Crazy. 
I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna? Let's just go get some girls. Let's go get some girls. Man, after my heart. That's what I'm talking. About. After hearing about all the terrible things Diddy allegedly did to Cassie, detailed in her lawsuit, and what Lil Rod has claimed, it seems like Justin Bieber might have had it even worse because he was so young when he got involved with Diddy. You can see the difference if you look at a video of Justin from back then, so young and innocent, compared to how he appeared just a few years later. It's clear he went through a lot, but it's kind of wild that people are only starting to piece things together now, even though the red flags were there the whole time. There's this one clip where Justin is visibly nervous while talking to Diddy, stumbling over his words because Diddy caught him off guard. The rumor is that Justin's team had been keeping him away from Diddy for a bit because they thought Diddy was a bad influence and was messing with Justin's health, both mentally and physically. So when Diddy showed up out of the blue, ready to dive back into their old dynamics, things got super tense. There's also this other video where it looks like Diddy is patting Justin down, maybe to check if he was wearing a wire, which is just bizarre. Whatever Diddy whispered to Justin at the end, it left Justin ending the meeting with a love you. Another thing people often overlooked was how Justin Bieber's problems with alcohol and other substances seemed to escalate after he started hanging out with Diddy. Take the 2014 Cyric party Diddy threw, where Justin was seen holding a bottle that was supposed to be Aqua Hydrate, a brand of water. But if you took a closer look, the liquid in the bottle Justin had was suspiciously yellow, hinting it might not have been water after all, possibly alcohol or something else. Years down the line, Justin openly shared how tough that period was for him. He was hurting, unhappy, confused, and even felt angry at God. It's a stark contrast to the image of him living it up at the height of his career. Despite the flashy lifestyle, Justin was struggling with some deep issues. Of course, it's important to note that Diddy wasn't the sole cause of Justin's troubles. Breaking into the industry at a young age without much solid guidance set him up for a rough ride. He was young but faced manipulation and objectification from nearly every corner. Fellow artists, interviewers, show hosts, it seemed like everyone wanted a piece of sweet JB, regardless of whether he he was okay with it. Like this one time on Ellen DeGeneres' show, she actually showed this super revealing paparazzi photo of Justin and then threw some pretty awkward questions his way. It just wasn't cool, especially considering his age at the time. You just brought a friend to Bora Bora? Yeah. And you're with your friend? Why are you putting me on the spot like this? Gosh. I mean, you can say, why can't you say you're dating somebody? I'm not dating anyone, though. She's just a friend? Back in 2011, when Justin was just 16, he had this weird interview with James Corden at the Brit Awards. Corden was just acting all strange around him. Can I say this? Lean into me again. You smell amazing. How old are you? Oh, uh, thank you. How old are you? I'm 16. I'll be 17 in like two weeks. Fast forward a bit, and at the 2012 American Music Awards, there was this moment with Jenny McCarthy that was just uncomfortable. Justin was barely 18, and Jenny, who was 40 at the time, was all over him. He literally had to pull away from her, and he even started his acceptance speech by saying, wow, I feel so violated right now. It just shows how awkward and out of place that whole scenario was. violated right now. And it's not just those incidents. There was another time when an interviewer was asking 15-year-old Justin some really inappropriate questions about the talk. Justin even had to call them out on it. Like, why would you ask a kid those kinds of things? Okay. So why don't you give me I, I, really, I feel uncomfortable right now. Aww. Why do you want to know from a 15-year-old boy? That's pretty weird. And here's Katy Perry just feeling Justin up. Who apparently wanted to know what a beaver butt like. Justin Bieber has really been through the ringer in this industry. The fact that he managed to navigate through those dark times is almost miraculous. And while all this was happening, the very people who should have been his protectors, like Usher and Diddy, weren't really stepping up. In fact, it often seemed like they were part of the problem. 